what is the strangest thing you've hidden something in? Like you're trying to hide something away from someone. So you put it in this weird location that no one else will be able to find. Oh, wow. Um, you know, I've never really had to hide anything like that, but I've thought about if I had to hide anything uh, like that, maybe like, in, you know, in the back of a toilet or something. <laughs> That's a perfect movie scene. I love it. start from watcher pass we're going to talk to him in just a second but first let's check out the trailer and while you're watching if you can like and subscribe to this channel that would be fantastic it helps me out a lot thank you james baker yeah da military Whew. i gotta tell you i'm very impressed daddy it's nice to have you home i feel much better now i heard you were getting out today oh jesus Let's go, we got some business to take care of. Three million. Where is it? Our old house. No! No! There's some guys in the house. Daddy, you need to come home. You gotta go. All right, so thank you so much for joining me. This is Asif Akbar, the writer and co-director of The Commando, which is coming to theaters and on demand on January 7, 2022. It is an action movie. It's an independent action movie, and it has some really big uh, actors in it. But I guess the first question is, you're a, a co-writer of this, right? So how, how did this idea come into being, and what role did you play in the overall writing of this story? Yeah, so um, uh, I actually... Um, was one of the co-writers of the story and the, I directed it and one of the producers as well. Uh, it came together with uh, my uh, producing partner, Al Bravo, and then also our writing partner, Koji Steven Sakai, who took um, this concept that Al and I had, we were developing to do a, a film that dealt with uh, a soldier dealing with PTSD and how it also affects uh, not only him, but his family and the people around him and how he has to battle his own demons and struggles uh, at the same time when there's a threat from an outside danger uh, uh, with a group of criminals that are invading his home and threatening his family because they're after uh, stashed away millions um, uh, that they wanna, you know, of course, retrieve. Now, uh, James Baker, who's the main character of this film, played by Michael J. White, uh, you know, he comes back home from this botched mission that uh, gives him PTSD. So now he's dealing with that trauma and, and uh, he becomes a threat to himself and his family in his own home. Um, and then all of a sudden he finds out there's this other outside threat. So he has to overcome his own you know, issues to now save his family. So we, we played around with that concept of PTSD and then also home invasion. Um, and then uh, we wanted to make it a simple film uh, with uh, less locations, less actors. But then as we uh, started, you know, going through more rewrites uh, from pitching it to different producers and getting feedback, the film kind of grew more and more. And then obviously once we... Uh, cast Michael J. White and then Mickey Rourke and uh, the film became more of a bigger action film uh, but I would I would consider it more as a thriller uh, it's not your average full throttle action film it does have action and fighting in it but it, it deals a lot more with the characters and and the story of uh, this hero who's uh, overcoming his own PTSD and how his family's dealing with it, and then how he saves his family from this outside danger. Um, so there, there's a lot of elements that kind of came together to make it what it is. Um, but I hope, you know, the audience will see something different in it. Yeah, and I like kind of how you, you pull it on its head, right? Because you think, right, this person coming back is probably the safest person to have in this house where right. all this you know, is happening. But then 
maybe maybe not so much because you're not sure what all is is gonna you know what all is going through his head because he's also kind of confused at what's going through his head. No, exactly, and and, and it also shows you know how important it is to have that family support, uh, especially you know your significant other as well. Um, you know, it, this is a real issue in our society that real people deal with every day, and it could lead to. Um, you know, very, very tragic events. Uh, people come back, they start using prescription drugs, they can OD, they can commit suicide, they can hurt their family members, they can hurt people, friends around them. Um, so it touches up uh, on a lot of those. And then also what they can do to seek help, you know, whether it's counseling, whether it's sharing it with their family to, um, because at the end of the day, you, you know, the family still suffers and deals with it. Um, and, and you have to have uh, a support system and ways to be able to cope with it and overcome it. And even if you can't overcome it, you have to be able to deal with it safely so you don't hurt yourself or others. Um, so it's, it's definitely a major issue that obviously, you know, we can't touch up on all aspects of it, but we tried to shed some light on it uh, through this story and, you know, trying to also keep it entertaining for the audience. And you mentioned already the, the two kind of main stars, Michael J. White and uh, Mickey Rourke. How did you get them involved? Because that was, I mean, I was, I loved seeing them in this film. I, I, was, I was impressed that you were able to get them. So how, how did you get them involved? Had you worked with them before? Or did you just kind of reach out and say, hey, if we want to do the story, you know, are you interested in it? Um, I had friends that had worked with uh, Michael before. And um, originally, you know, he was actually the first actor we approached to play the role. Um, he just fit, uh, you know, coming from an action background, we wanted to make an action movie at the same time, but then also we needed someone that could also act and have that, be able to carry that depth um, uh, with the character. And, you know, Michael, um, from what I've seen, you know, over the years, he's a great actor. Uh, he's obviously a legendary martial artist, an action star, but he's also a, a very good actor in his own right. Um, in this film, you'll get to see him act with more of an open range, you know, uh, with, you know, obviously the character he plays. Uh, so it, it's not just a fighting movie, you know, you get to really see him act in a different way, which is going to be exciting, I think, for his fans and just everyone. Also, uh, with Mickey Rourke, um, Mickey was uh, attached to another film that I was supposed to uh, do during the pandemic last year, but because of, uh, you know, the uh, issues with the pandemic and the kind of film that was, it was delayed. So, um, you know, I had connection with Mickey at that time. So, uh, you know, who better to play the villain than Mickey Rourke, you know, so I approached him and, you know, <laughs> no, you he liked this at the you time. Can't beat Mickey Rourke for a villain. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just blessed that, uh, you know, all the actors, uh, you know, liked the script and they were open to it and embraced it to be able to uh, come on board and bring it to life with us. And this is this is really how indie filmmaking is, right? You basically, you, you go, you know, I would like these actors and then you go reach out to them and they both just kind of say, yes, that sounds perfect. Like your, your number one actors always come and, and agree to be in, yeah. right? <laughs> Yeah, and, and then there's, you know, obviously a lot of elements that have to fall in place and timing, scheduling, and, uh, you know, we had a very tight schedule to shoot this film and uh, it, on location in New Mexico. And, you know, and Mickey loves New Mexico and, uh, it, you know, just everything just kind of fell into place at the right time. Uh, it's all about the right time in this business from what I've learned to get, you know, these kinds of movies made. And I've been very blessed to be able to uh, have all the elements come together. Yeah, no, that's that. That sounds like fantastic timing, and I, I love the location. And you got to, you got this beautiful house that you were able to tear apart just a little bit. I mean, there were, I think you probably yeah. kept it in pretty good shape, but there were a few scenes where you were able to tear apart. Maybe they were doing a renovation, and they're just like, "Hey, you know what? Go ahead, destroy our bathroom. We don't care." No, it's actually yeah, it's it's funny because um, you know, obviously we tore the house apart. Obviously, you know, when you watch the movie, you'll see. They have to break into the walls, the floors, all that. But uh, surprisingly enough, we didn't put a scratch on the real house at all. Like our art department uh, production designer, Chad Quick, is uh, really good. And, um, you know, they, they were able to recreate 
the walls and the floors and uh, everything to where what we're breaking is not the real house. It's actually, you know, all sets. They're sets that were built in the house uh, and replacing, you know, the real, like, we, we made a wall that went in front of the real wall, you know, and, and uh, we broke that. So um, the location in New Mexico is, uh, was actually, you know, the perfect place. So we wrote it originally for uh, Las Vegas, you know, and um, we had to, for production purposes, shift it to New Mexico, which actually ended up being the right choice for this type of film. And I wanted the look to have something, you know, close to like, Sicario or Breaking Bad and um, you know that was the perfect environment for it. You know definitely and it, it sounds like Mickey Rourke you know liked that move as well so that, that probably didn't hurt. Um, and I know we have very limited time so I'd like to switch. I call it the lightning round. They're just lightweight questions about the film and the characters to see how your personal experiences relate to things that happen in the film. You do not have to answer any of them. I will not be offended if you choose to pass on them but sure, I try to keep sure. them very answerable. Uh, so the first question is what's the most money you've ever found? Oh, most money I've ever found, yep. uh, just lying around, or uh, in your walls, or you know, like. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, to be honest, uh, you know, I don't think I've been. Uh, I actually, yeah, I, 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 I am now uh, recalling. I used to be a, a manager at a movie theater um, back a long time ago, and uh, this one time we found um, we, you know, the ushers were cleaning the theaters and I was in there with them and we found a wallet with $1,400 in it wow. and uh, yeah, obviously we you know gave we found the owner um, we brought it back we put it in the safe in our office and you can see me winking here yeah uh -huh, uh -huh. Come, obviously you know and then you know a couple hours later someone shows up hey I lost my wallet we take it out of the safe give it to them they count the money it's all there and, you know they were amazed it was uh, but uh, that was yeah that was probably the one time and then other times like when i found stuff probably like a dollar you know <laughs> here and there yeah. oh you know but I, I imagine that like karma from that wallet probably has paid dividends throughout your life so that's a... sure, sure i'd like to think so yeah. <laughs> uh, have you ever sleepwalked um uh, i don't think so uh yeah i uh, i hope not you know mm -hmm. but i do know people that have uh, you know, so it, it is definitely a real thing. Yeah, no, definitely. What is the strangest thing you've hidden something in? Like you're trying to hide something away from someone. So you put it in this weird location that no one else will be able to find. Oh, wow. Um, you know, I've never really had to hide anything like that, but I've thought about if I had to hide anything, uh, like that, maybe like, in, you know, in the back of a toilet or something <laughs> that's a perfect movie scene i love it um yeah. and what is the strangest thing you found in a place that you lived the strangest thing wow that's sorry there's um there's so many so many strange things that followed you throughout life <laughs> yeah like um well, yeah I, you know honestly i can't even think of it right now to be i don't want to waste up your time but yeah, no yeah there's uh i think more back in my childhood like you know i i uh, I was playing in my backyard once and, uh, you know, all of a sudden there's like a skeleton of an animal and it looked like a bird or like fly. it was like a weird, very weird skeletal uh, remain. And even to this day, I don't know what really it was, you know, it was like, it was like the woods in the back of my house and um, it looked freaky, you know, I don't know how the thing died. It looked like it was messed up, you know, and uh uh, but that that was kind of traumatizing at that time. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm surprised you didn't become a horror director. I mean, that, that seems like the perfect setup for a, a yeah. career in horror. I've actually made some horror films, so <laughs> yeah. But uh, but you know that that stuff. Um, always, you know, whenever I find like any dead carcasses and stuff like that, that that freaks me out because like you, your mind starts to wonder like how did it get there? What happened to it? You know. Yeah. And the last question is: Did you ever throw a party when your parents were away? Um, not when they were away. No, I've been lucky <laughs> enough to be able to throw parties when my parents were around and, uh, you know, not get too wild. But uh, yeah, I, I never had to really sneak around like that. 
You Thank sound you. like a, a very good person. And the film is uh, The Commando. It's coming to theaters and on demand on January 7, 2022. This is Akbar, the co-writer and director. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, David. Have a happy holiday. You too. Take care. Commando, which is coming to theaters, digital, and on demand on January 7, 2022. If you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you. Thank you.